sound of wind, distant hum. They said it was impossible, a violation of the universe's most sacred rules. Yet in a laboratory in California, something is moving that shouldn't be able to move. No fuel, no exhaust, no propellant burning away into the void. Just thrust, pure, impossible thrust. For centuries, we've been prisoners of a simple truth. To go forward, you must push something backward. Rockets burn fuel, jets expel air, even a swimmer pushes water. Newton's third law has been absolute, unbreakable, fundamental. Until now. What if everything we know about propulsion is about to change? What if the key to the stars has been hiding in the space between particles, waiting for us to finally see it? This is the story of two teams racing to break physics itself, March 2023. A former NASA engineer steps forward with a claim that sends shockwaves through the scientific community. Charles Buer, founder of Exodus Propulsion Technologies, announces something extraordinary. His team has built a device that generates thrust without propellant, not better fuel, not more efficient combustion, no fuel at all. The machine sits on a laboratory bench, deceptively simple, capacitors, electrodes, a framework of metal and wire. When electricity flows through it, it moves. Not much at first, just micro-newtons of force, but it moves against gravity, against everything we thought we knew. Buer calls it electrostatic propulsion. The concept sounds almost elegant. Charge flows across specially designed surfaces, creating asymmetric electric fields. These fields interact with the quantum foam of space-time itself, generating thrust without expelling mass. In traditional propulsion, you're always trading weight for movement. A rocket must carry fuel, which adds mass, which requires more fuel, which adds more mass. It's a tyranny that has kept us bound to chemical reactions and explosive force. But what if you could interact directly with the fabric of space? What if thrust wasn't about pushing matter backward, but about manipulating the electromagnetic properties of the vacuum itself? The device reportedly continues moving even after power is cut. Momentum without mass ejection. Motion without Newton's equal and opposite reaction. It shouldn't work. By every law we've proven over 400 years of physics, it cannot work. Yet the readings persist. Exodus Propulsion Technologies isn't thinking small. Their roadmap doesn't end with laboratory demonstrations or satellite adjustments. They're designing a spacecraft, one that would run on nothing but electricity generated from solar panels or nuclear reactors. Imagine a vessel that never runs out of fuel because it never needed fuel to begin with. A ship that could accelerate continuously for months, years, decades. The outer planets become accessible. The Kuiper Belt. The Oort Cloud. Perhaps even the nearest stars. Boer's team speaks in careful, measured tones, aware that extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. But behind the caution, you can hear something else. Conviction. The quiet certainty of engineers who have seen their instruments register the impossible. Still, the scientific establishment watches with narrowed eyes. The history of breakthrough propulsion is littered with wreckage. Devices that seemed to work until they didn't. Theories that explained nothing. Dreamers who became cautionary tales. The skeptics have good reason to doubt. They've been burned before. While Exodus pursues electrostatics, another team takes a different path into the unknown. Ivo Leonatid, a startup working from first principles, has built their approach on one of the most controversial ideas in modern physics, quantized inertia. The theory, championed by physicist Mike McCulloch, suggests that inertia itself that fundamental resistance to acceleration 
emerges from interactions with quantum radiation at the edge of the observable universe. It sounds like science fiction. It might be science fiction, but Ivo has built a device called the Quantum Drive, and they claim it produces thrust. Quantized inertia proposes something radical, that unruh radiation, a predicted but never directly observed phenomenon, creates an asymmetric pressure on accelerating objects. This asymmetry, properly harnessed, could generate thrust without propellant. The universe in this view isn't empty space. It's a seething foam of virtual particles, quantum fluctuations, fields and forces we barely understand. And somewhere in that foam, there might be leverage, a way to push against the cosmos itself. Traditional physics says this violates conservation of momentum. Ivo's engineers respond that momentum might be conserved on cosmic scales, transferred to distant quantum horizons beyond our observation. It's elegant. It's revolutionary. It's also unproven by any mainstream standard. Both teams know the ghosts they're competing against. The EM drive. The Dean drive. The gyroscopic inertial thruster, cold fusion. Over and over, inventors have announced breakthroughs in propellantless propulsion. Over and over, independent testing has found nothing. Measurement errors, environmental interference, wishful thinking amplified by imprecise instruments. The most famous recent failure was the EM drive, a resonant cavity that supposedly converted microwaves into thrust. NASA tested it. The results seemed positive. Then better experiments revealed the truth. Thermal expansion, magnetic interaction with Earth's field, vibrations in the test rig. The thrust was real, but it wasn't coming from the device. It was noise masquerading as revolution. So why should anyone believe Exodus or IVO? The teams point to improved methodology, better isolation, more rigorous testing. They invite scrutiny. They publish their designs. They acknowledge the burden of proof lies with them. But acknowledgement isn't evidence. Openness isn't validation. The scientific community waits, demanding replication, demanding peer review, demanding the kind of proof that can't be explained away. If either technology proves real, the implications cascade across every aspect of space exploration. Consider the spacecraft Chrysalis, a conceptual design for an interstellar arc bound for Proxima Centauri b. The mission profile is staggering, a 400-year journey across four light years. Generations of humans born and dying in the darkness between stars. The engineering challenges are immense. You need closed-loop life support, rotating habitats to simulate gravity, shielding against cosmic radiation, food production, water recycling, psychological stability across centuries. But the most fundamental challenge is thrust. Every kilogram of propellant you carry is a kilogram you can't use for habitats, food, water, or people. Chemical rockets are hopeless for interstellar distances. Even nuclear pulse propulsion, riding the shock waves of atomic bombs, struggles with the mass ratio. A propellantless drive changes everything. Continuous acceleration becomes possible. Transit times shrink. The payload fraction explodes. What was barely conceivable becomes almost practical. Yet the establishment pushes back, and not without reason. Physics is built on conservation laws. Principles so fundamental that their violation would require rebuilding our understanding of reality. Energy is conserved. Momentum is conserved. You cannot get something from nothing. If these devices work as claimed, where does the momentum go? What exactly are they pushing against? The quantum vacuum? Space-time itself? And if so, why don't we see these effects everywhere? Critics point out that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and laboratory measurements are not extraordinary evidence. 
They're preliminary data from invested parties. They need independent replication. They need theoretical frameworks that don't break physics. Some scientists go further. They suggest these teams are deluding themselves, mistaking noise for signal, seeing patterns in chaos because they desperately want the universe to work a certain way. The engineers respond with data, thrust curves, control experiments, blind tests where the device's orientation is randomized, statistical analysis showing signals well above background noise. They point to the history of science, the times when the impossible became inevitable, heavier than air flight was theoretically unsound until the Wright brothers flew. Continental drift was rejected as pseudoscience until plate tectonics explained it. Even heliocentrism was once heresy. Being dismissed by the establishment, they argue, isn't proof you're wrong. Sometimes it just means you're early, but they also know the burden remains theirs. Revolutionaries must prove the revolution. The universe doesn't grade on a curve. Right now, in laboratories across the world, instruments are measuring forces that shouldn't exist. Engineers are iterating on designs that violate textbooks. Theorists are scrambling to explain observations that mainstream physics says are impossible. One of three things is happening. First possibility, it's all experimental error. Measurement artifacts, thermal effects, electromagnetic interference, the same mistakes that have fooled propulsion dreamers for decades. In six months or a year, better experiments will reveal nothing and these teams will join the long list of failures. Second possibility, there's something real, but it's not propulsion. Maybe these devices reveal new physics, quantum effects we didn't expect, vacuum interactions we don't understand. Scientifically valuable, but not the revolution promised. Third possibility, everything changes. If propellantless thrust is real, if we can truly push against space-time or the quantum vacuum or whatever these fields are interacting with, then the solar system opens before us. Mars becomes a suburb. The asteroid belt becomes accessible. Jupiter's moons, Saturn's rings, the ice worlds beyond Neptune. All within reach of vessels that never run dry. And beyond that, the stars themselves. For now, we wait. We test. We verify. We demand that the universe show its hand with unambiguous clarity. The teams at Exodus and Ivo continue their work, refining their devices, gathering data, preparing for the scrutiny that will make or break their claims. They know the odds. They know the history. They know that most revolutionary propulsion concepts end in silence and embarrassment. But they also know that someone someday will crack this problem. Someone will find the loophole in Newton's laws, the leverage point that lets us slip free from the tyranny of the rocket equation. Maybe it's them. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe it's 50 years from now. But the dream persists, as it always has. The dream of motion without mass, of thrust without fire, of ships that sail the cosmos on principles we haven't yet imagined. And perhaps, just perhaps, in a laboratory in California, that dream is beginning to wake up.